Hey guys, it's great to be back with you as we are right in the middle of a new series called This or That. Um, it's been a while since I've recorded something, so it feels strange to be in front of the camera again, but it's also great to be back and great to be with you again on a Sunday. So this new series that we are looking at is all about comparison, how we can compare ourselves to other people's lives. And actually, when we do that, we almost find that we don't quite measure up or something is off and that can make us feel a whole host of different things. Um, it can make us feel angry, it can make us feel anxious, it can make us feel motivated, it can make us feel a load of different things, um, but not necessarily always great things, because it's not really great to really compare ourselves to other people. And today, what I want us to look at is when we compare ourselves, when we are comparing to other things, other people, stuff that's going on, actually, one of the main emotions that can come up is a thing called jealousy. So this morning we're going to look a little bit at jealousy. Now, whenever I think of comparison, whenever I think of jealousy, the uh, the clip that always comes to mind is, and I really hope you've seen this film because it is top film, is Toy Story 1. When Buzz Lightyear has landed for the first time on the top of Andy's bed, and Woody goes up to see him and suddenly he's there, he thinks he's a space ranger, he's got all the clips and the toys and everyone is so wowed by him. And Woody, you can see him slowly but surely kind of starting to compare himself and get more and more jealous as it goes on. So to kickstart this morning, I want us to check this clip out. Enjoy. Watch yourself. Oh, Pops, who goes there? Don't shoot. It's okay. Friends. Do you know these life forms? Yes. They're Andy's toys. All right, everyone, you're clear to come up. I am Buzz Lightyear. I come in peace. Oh, I'm so glad you're not a dinosaur. Wait, wait. Thank you. Now, thank you all for your kind welcome. Say, what's that button do? I'll show you. Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. Oh. Hey, Woody's got something like that. His is a pool strength. Only it... only it sounds like a car ran over it. Oh, yeah, but not like this one. This is a quality sound system. Probably all copper wiring, huh? So, uh, where are you from? Singapore? Hong Kong? Well, no. Actually, I, I'm, I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. As a member of the elite Universe Protection Unit of the Space Ranger Corps, I protect the galaxy from the threat of invasion from the evil Emperor Zerg, sworn enemy of the Galactic Alliance. Oh, really? I'm from play school. And I'm from Mattel. Well, I'm not really from Mattel. I'm actually from a smaller company that was purchased and leveraged by Apple. Well, I don't really... You think they've never seen a new toy before? Well, sure. Look at him. He's got more gadgets on him than a Swiss Army knife. Ah, 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 ah. Please be careful. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. Hey, a laser? How come you don't have a laser, Woody? It's not a laser. It's a, it's a little light bulb that blinks. What's with him? Laser envy. All right, that's enough. Look, we're all very impressed with Andy's new toy. Toy? T-O-Y. Toy. Excuse me. I, I think the word you're searching for is Space Ranger. The word I'm searching for, I can't say, because there's preschool toys present. Getting kind of tense, aren't you? Oh, uh, Mr. Lightyear, uh, now I'm curious. What does a Space Ranger actually do? He's not a Space Ranger. He doesn't fight evil or, or shoot lasers or fly. Excuse me. Impressive wingspan. Very good. Oh, what? What? These are plastic. He can't fly. They are a terillium carbonic alloy, and I can fly. No, you can't. <laughs> yes, I can. You can't. Can. Can't. 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 I can tell you, I can fly around this room with my eyes closed. Okay, then, Mr. Lightbeer, prove it. All right, then I will. Stand back, everyone. To infinity and beyond! Can. Whoa! 
magnificently. I found my moving buddy. Wow. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. That wasn't flying. That was falling with style. Man, the dolls must really go for you. Can you teach me that? <laughs> Golly, Bob, howdy. Oh, shut up. You know, in a couple of days, everything will be just the way it was. They'll see. You ever felt a little bit like Woody did in that clip? Somebody ever come along or something ever come along that's kind of thrown you off a little bit? You find yourself suddenly comparing yourself to them and deep down inside you can feel what can be described as Shakespeare said as being the green monster starting to bubble up. That green monster being jealousy. You've compared yourself and you haven't quite measured up to their standards and you start to feel jealous. I know I have. I know I definitely have. I know there's been a few times in a training pitch of football I felt jealous that somebody else was better than me and I've definitely gone in harder in a tackle. Probably not the best way to deal with it. But we've probably all been in that situation. Ever had a friend who suddenly got the best new phone? Or a brand new pair of, of shoes? Or clothes? Or they go on really nice holidays? Or they just seem to have that extra thing that, that you really want? So you start to compare yourself. You start to want it. And jealousy can, can, can bubble up inside us and, and kind of almost start to, to choke us a little bit and make us feel a whole host of different things. It can make you feel anxious. Anxious about when you're around them. Anxious about how you look. Anxious about what you're saying. Anxious about if you're fitting in. It starts to make you feel insecure in the, in the circle of friends that you're in. Because you find yourself just wanting more and more to be like somebody else or have what somebody else has and, and you just can't have it. Maybe that then starts to bubble up an anger inside you. You start to get angry and you start to kind of take that out on, on the people that are around you. You start to become snappy. You start to become, you start to resent the situation, resent the person. But you know what? Maybe, maybe you feel all right with your life. Maybe your comparison is you're starting to compare yourself to, well, look, look how good I have it. I have all this stuff and that person doesn't. The pendulum can swing the other way and that can almost be just as unhealthy. Because actually you're starting to compare yourself in a different way. Jealousy can take hold of us in so many different forms. And it can kind of sneak up on us a little bit. Before we know it, we find ourselves acting in a way and ultimately impacting those around us. It's not just something that sneaks up and impacts you. It starts to have an impact on the people that we hang out with, impact on our friends, on our family, because we start to change. Our actions start to change. Maybe you start to, to say things about people behind their back. Maybe you're becoming snappy. Maybe you're... You start to withdraw from situations, from friendship groups, from from times with your family because you're feeling insecure and you're just, that green monster, that jealousy is just slowly choking the life out of you. People around you notice it, family notice it, you notice it. It doesn't just impact you. So how do we live a life knowing that, that this jealousy is about? How do we live a life knowing and in a way of being able to control that jealousy. Control ourselves in terms of comparing ourselves to other people. That's what I want to turn to the Bible. I want to look at a story in the Old Testament um, about two guys. You probably will have heard of one of these guys. His name is David. He was an absolute legend. You might know him from such stories as Killing Goliath. Um, great story. Check it out. Um, but we're going to we're going to have a look at this moment where a battle had just been won. So David had just won, beaten Goliath and, and won this battle for Saul, for Saul's army. Saul was the king at the time. Um, so we pick up this story and they've kind of come back into town and Saul has thrown this celebration to be like, this is amazing. Check this out. We won the battle. Let's celebrate with these guys. But Saul ended up not being too happy because actually the way that they started celebrating and the songs that they started to sing celebrated David just as much as Saul. So we're going to pick the story up here. It's in 1 Samuel. Um, let's check it out. This made Saul very angry. 
What's this, he said. They credit David with ten thousands and me with only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. Did you see what happened there? Jealousy started to change the way that Saul viewed and interacted with David. It kind of went from this, this sort of friendship and this kind of acknowledgement that was okay with each other. Saul was okay with David. But suddenly that jealousy kicked in and Saul's interaction with him changed. So much so that Saul even tried to kill David. Not once, not twice, but multiple times. This green monster of jealousy really took hold of Saul, really infected how he interacted with David and had a real detrimental impact on how he treated David and how he treated himself. In fact, he spent the rest of his reign as king pretty much trying to come up with ways to hurt David. Now, I know that's a pretty extreme story to look at, but it does show the power that this green monster can have, that this jealousy can have on our lives, on how we interact with others and how we view ourselves. Because actually, when we compare ourselves to others, we don't actually celebrate others or celebrate ourselves in the process. In fact, actually, it does the opposite. Now, in another book in the Bible called Proverbs, it says this. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. So envy is just another word for jealousy in this passage. And what the writer of Proverbs was showing here by saying that, that it rots at the core, it rots at your bones, is saying that, that jealousy is something that can get so hold of us that it starts to change us from the inside out. Now, it doesn't mean that jealousy is actually going to rot away at your bones. No, it's, it's more of a metaphor to explain what jealousy does, a picture that's painted. And I think it paints a pretty strong one. Because if we think of our bones, what do they do? They give a shape. They're kind of core to our body, aren't they? What he's saying here is that jealousy, this green monster, can get so hold of our lives that it actually rots away at the core of us rots away at the very core of us and slowly but surely that inside rotting comes out in how we act from the inside to the out and we see that with Saul don't we we see him get so jealous of David that it completely and utterly takes over his life affects his ability to rule his kingdom as king it rotted him it rotted at his bones now interestingly David didn't fall into that path in fact, David did the opposite. David kept a sense of peace. It goes on further in Proverbs. If you read on, it talks about how peace is what gives life. He didn't fall into that trap of comparing. He was happy with what he had. He, he held on to the promises that God gave him. He, he held on to what was already good in his life. And didn't fall into that trap of suddenly comparing himself and becoming jealous of Saul. And that's something that we can have in our own lives. If we take time to stop comparing and looking at what others have and actually looking at what we already have, that's what starts to bring about peace. That's what starts to bring about a sense of being able to celebrate ourselves and celebrate others because we are happy and content with what we already have. So let's look inwards, let's look at our lives and let's look at what's good and let's celebrate that. And then in doing that, we can celebrate that in others. Don't compare yourself to them. Celebrate them and celebrate you. How are some of the ways that we can do this though? How are some of the ways that this can actually impact and be implemented? In our lives let's have a look so the two ways that I think that we can implement this in our lives which we just briefly touched on a second ago is one start with you and then two celebrate others so the first thing is what's great in your life what is it that you can look at that is good 
Maybe it's a, a song that you like. Maybe it's as simply as you enjoy walking. Maybe it's, maybe it's the, the love of a sport that you play. Celebrate that. Enjoy that. Tell people about the things that you love. The things that are good to you. The things that bring you joy. Maybe it's sitting and reading a great book. Maybe it's being out with your family. Celebrate those moments. Because when we look at those and we look at what is good in our lives and what brings us joy, that starts to slowly bring us towards peace. And then secondly, celebrate others. Now, this isn't easy. This isn't something that's going to be a sudden switch that you can do. And especially because I'm going to challenge you to celebrate the person that you are most jealous of. Maybe it's saying, oh, that's a really nice phone that you got. Oh, you, you're great. Um, at that sport or oh, you're, su you're such a great singer or whatever it is that's, that's grinding you about them or about a situation celebrate them celebrate them don't let jealousy have the power celebrate them so that then there can be more peace in that situation and I know it's not going to be easy and I know I feel like it's 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 easy for me to sit here and speak to this camera and say yeah you know go out you're not feeling jealous just celebrate them but in order to move to that peace, sometimes we've got to do some stuff that's difficult. We've got to put ourselves out there. We've got to say, do you know what? I don't want this green monster to take over my life. I want to be free. I want to be peaceful. I want to, I want to be like David. I want, to, I want to celebrate what is good in my life so I can move out of a place of comparison and into a place of being able to celebrate myself and celebrate others. Because Jesus sees you as unique. Jesus sees you as gifted Jesus sees you as someone with such good in their lives such joy in their lives find those things pray about it ask Jesus to show it in your life and then ask Jesus ways that that you can then celebrate that in other people so that you can break the chains that the green monster of jealousy can have on our lives so this week let's stop comparing ourselves and let's celebrate ourselves and those around us. Have a great week, guys. Praying for you as always. And hopefully I'll get to see you all soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.